Hey everyone, happy Friday. It is another Maven's Manufacturing Day. And today I'm speaking with Michelle Leon. She is the operations manager for both LaVille Technology and LaVille Aviation, both of which are part of LaVille Technology Corporation. So one company, two separate parts, and you are head of operations for both companies. So Michelle, welcome to Maven's of Manufacturing. How are you doing today? I love the setup that you have going on on your <laughs> yes, uh, those are, yeah, so first of all, thank you for having me. Yeah, this is a hodgepodge of photos and art from my kids um, all over the place. It just sometimes I when love you're it. having a rough day, it's nice to turn, you know. I love some. that. I used, to, so I started out in the media business, and if you're here, make sure you're dropping your comments and your questions, too. I always forget to let people know that they can join the conversation. We already have Jacob. Sam is showing up. Hi, Jacob. Thanks for joining Hi. us. Um, but when I was in the media uh, space, I had a cubicle with no windows. So my daughter, when she was like nine years old, she drew me a window to put oh. in my cubicle. And it had like a tree and a bird. And yeah, I, I definitely understand hanging up kids are in your office. Yeah. But I want to know more about you. How, how did you start out in engineering and manufacturing? And you know, what what did your pathway look like leading up to where you're at now with LaVille? Yeah, it's kind of not the most conventional, but I also think that's a way that a lot of people kind of end up here too. So I uh, started out in hospitality and I love the industry. I'm, I'm a big people person, um, but I found very quickly hospitality's nights, weekends, holidays, and I really wasn't having the work-life balance that I wanted. So from there I went and I uh, interned at Lockheed Martin and I got that corporate cubicle feel and really quickly found out that also wasn't quite for me. Um, and then I moved into some other management positions and then kind of just grew. I had a lot of really great mentors, grew my leadership skills and um, LaVille is a family company. And so I came to help out my family and help grow the business and, you know, give my skills and my passion um, to here and I've fallen in love with manufacturing. Uh, if you had asked me before if this is where I would end up, I probably would have told you no, but honestly, it's one of the best places to be and I, I'm trying to bring everybody in with me. <laughs> That's how I am. I'm just like, come join us. This is, yeah. this is where the party's at and it's fun. Yeah. So is LaVille, is that family part of your family? Like, are you actually part of the, the family at LaVille? I'm married into this bunch of crazies oh, so that gotcha. shows to be here. <laughs> um, but yes, it's it's family, but we also say any of our employees that aren't, you know, family, we kind of adopt as well. So, so it's a nice part of the uh, environment over here. Gotcha. So can you give us more information about LaVille Corporation? Like what sort of industries are you involved in? What types of products and services are you providing? Like what it is? that the company does that people should know about? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll start with, we have two sister companies, as you mentioned. So um, LaVille Aviation, we make portable wireless avionics. Um, that's just a really fancy way of putting that we put all of your instrumentation on your iPad, which is really cool um, because we can modernize a lot of really old cockpits uh, with our instruments and a couple of iPads. Um, what I love to tell people is we manufacture everything here in-house, the circuit boards, the enclosures, we do all the calibration. And the kind of cool part is all of the enclosures are actually made, all the parts and pieces on machines that level technology makes. So not only do we make the parts, but we make the machines. And then that's kind of what level technology does. We make um, what we call capable, compact, complete CNC machines. So machines that are portable, most of which fit through a standard doorway, plug into standard power so that any space can really become a manufacturing space. That's really cool. I really want to see more of the stuff that you do on the aviation side because I've been getting more um, interested in what's going on in aviation because there's actually a leading ladies of aviation group that yeah. I got invited into and I had no idea how many women we're entering aviation as well too. And I, it's so refreshing to see all of these mostly male dominated traditional mm -hmm. industries getting more and more women, especially in leadership positions. So um, definitely I'm gonna have to take more ganders at your aviation stuff that you're doing. Um, 
We do have Vince on here. He said, I'm here, Megan. I'm here. You can start. <laughs> Thank you, Vince, for letting me start right away. And then we have Joe. Hi, Megan and Michelle. LaVille is a great company. So at LaVille Corporation, you're an operations manager. And what I like to do is, you know, talk about some of your skill sets that help you be successful and then ask about what your day in the life looks like. Because um, one of the things we're going to talk about later is that there are so many opportunities within this sector. And I don't think we're doing a great job educating the communities that we're within about those oppor opportunities. Mm -hmm. So what exactly is an operations manager and what sort of skill sets do you have that you provide that make you successful in the position that you have? Yeah, so I would say keeping in mind that we're a smaller organization, me as an operations manager, I wear a lot of hats. So I do a lot of, of, of things that I don't make anything, but I do a lot of everything else. So I would say my biggest skill is probably problem solving, because as we know, we can make a plan and we can probably make a plan for the plan, but the plan doesn't always work. So we always <laughs> have to kind of be what I call open, positive and flexible. Okay, what's going on? What tools and resources do we have and how do we fix it? I don't want to hear why it's not working. I want to hear how we're going to get it working kind of thing. So I'm kind of that person that kind of is that fresh perspective that kind of, I'm also that guns blazing, like let's, you know, we need inertia. Let's keep this movement going and, and just kind of keeping everybody looking at the positive side of things. Um, on top of that, I'm the big organizer. You know, we write our goals down, we're doing the follow-up, we're seeing what resources we need, what contacts we need, um, just making sure that the idea is getting executed. Because the great thing about the team that I work with is I work with a lot of really creative, smart people that are brilliant. And sometimes they just need that person to take their ideas and their dreams and help guide them into reality. So I think that's also a big part of what I do. That's really cool. Jacob said that means she keeps that company running. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have yeah. to have Jacob present at my end of year review. <laughs> there, there is um, a saying that I heard, if you want something said, have a man say it. But if you want something done, then have a woman do it. I didn't come up with that saying. I'm just saying that's yeah. one of the things that I heard. And I kind of think it's true. I've met so many women in um, organizations that they do. They project manage a lot of things because it, it gets done and you can keep track of things. And I just think that's the difference between men and women. Like we think a different way and so do men. And if you have us working together, a lot more yeah. things can get done. So um, that's why we need to bring more women in here. But you did mention something interesting. Like you, you admitted, like, I'm not the one making things. I'm not hands on, but I think that's a good point to kind of talk about right now and un unhash a little bit. Um, manufacturing and engineering is such a broad spectrum of different things and you don't necessarily have to be great at math or science. So what are some of the things that, what were some of the misconceptions that you had before coming on to LaVille about engineering and manufacturing and how has working with the company you're at today kind of change those misconceptions and you know what can you tell anybody who might be stuck deciding what pathway to, to choose what can you tell about engineering manufacturing that might be a good place for them to come and join yeah so when they first reached out to me uh, to come and take this position i was like oh man how am i gonna manage i don't even know how to read a blueprint and you want me to manage a machine <laughs> company um but they're like well that's not what we're hiring you to do we're we're hiring you to manage people and processes and they're like and you know how to do that so like that was like the first thing of like realizing this isn't any different than anything i've done before it's mm -hmm. it's people it's processes it's a new product and i have to learn it but we can learn anything like we're all capable of learning um so like that's one thing the other thing is i've realized that it isn't just like, we don't just need engineers. We need engineers, we need assembly technicians, we need marketing representatives, we need accountants, we need PR people, we need management, we need, we need everybody under the sun. We need creative people, we need technical people. So like every skill is needed. This is, it's still a business, it's still an organization like anyone else. We're just manufacturing a different type of product. So I always think like, 
because people associate manufacturing with this very technical skill, we forget that we need all the other parts and pieces to make those wheels turn. And that's where we're lacking is in just getting those other those other perspectives and those other talents into the industry. Yeah. I think the other thing is too is, you know, when I first thought about manufacturing, I thought it was just this and I've worked in companies. I worked in a tooling company that, you know, was a little dark and dirty and digi and greasy, but I kind of liked that. Like I enjoyed being around the smell of what, you know, the the metal that was getting cut by the CNC machines. Like there's just, a, it's kind of like that new car smell, but it's, yeah. it's metal on metal. And I really enjoyed that, but not everybody likes that. And I think another thing is, is, you know, you don't have to be good at math or science. I'm a writer and I've had a really great career. You know, I started out in 2008 as a tech writer for industrial manufacturing. So I think as a, a community, as a sector, we really need to start showcasing more to the communities we're, that we're in, what opportunities are available and help the teachers explain it a little bit better, help the student counselors. Cause my student counselor, I felt so bad, like, because I tested so well in English, she's just like, you're going to be a college professor. And I'm like, no, I don't want to, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do that. Like, so we gotta, we gotta give them more lingo and jargon to use when they're, they're getting kids excited. Cause most kids, you know, when, especially when they're younger, a lot of time, like even my boys, they want to be a firefighter or a police officer right now. Cause that's <laughs> all they know. So um, we're starting to get more STEM stuff involved in their playtime. So my ex-husband just bought our um, son Declan a microscope and he's obsessed with it. Like he loves it. So I'm going to do more things like that. But you're a mom as well, too. And I wanted to touch on that because um, I feel like a lot of mothers have this idea that this isn't a place for them because they're not might not be the appropriate life work balance. And I know that some companies are really getting creative on how they're helping moms not just you know current moms but also new moms who are having their first child really yeah. adapt to that work-life balance so they're they're doing things like creating spaces for breastfeeding or pumping um they're actually partnering up with daycares like how how did you feel about entering this sector as as a mom and what are some of the things you do to to have that work-life balance that's so important yeah, absolutely. And those are all like huge things that I'm passionate about because I mean, I did breastfeed my kids and I did pump at LaVille. And so it was like one of those things that like it, I felt always really supported and that was really important to me. Like everybody had an alarm and they're like, oh, that's Michelle's time. And I would, you know, go and do my thing and have my bags in the freezer over here. So like, you know, you do what you got to do. But one of the things that I actually love about working here. And I think also kind of just about our industry, too, is that we have that opportunity to have that time. Like if my girls have an event at school, I, I get to be there. If we've got something out, you know, after hours, they're not feeling well. Like I have that flexibility to be able to be present in their lives. But then I'm, I also love my daughter made me in school. I'm sure you've gotten those Mother's Day. Like what are the things I love about my mom? Yeah. And one of the things she wrote in there is my mom works hard so that she can take care of us and make sure that we have everything we need. And I really love that because I, one of my goals is to show her that we have to work hard, but we also play hard too. So mom works really hard Monday through Friday, but on the weekends, you know, that's our time together. And of course at nights we have our snuggles and what we call cheese mid time where we tell each other about our day. And so I think we go back to quality over quantity, I make sure that the times that I'm with them is quality time and that, but they also understand that when I'm not with them, it's because we're working hard to make things better for us as a family. And so yeah. I want to show them that balance. But really quick, before I forget, you were talking about what your kids want to be when they grow up. Um, my daughters, if you ask them right now, my six-year-old says she wants to be an engineer and my four-year-old says she wants to be a pilot. And my, my favorite thing about that is to them, there was no question of gender on either of those. Like it was just, this is what I want to be when I grow up. And that's going to change 1000 times, right? From now until, you know, 18. But I just love that their hearts are already kind of on that, 
on that path yeah. and they're excited about it. They come here and they run around. They're not scared of the noises, the machines, the tools, the smells, the dirt. Um, and so it's, it's great to expose kids early. Yeah. And I like the point that you brought up too, where it's not, they don't tie gender in with what they want to be mm -hmm. as, and that reminds me, what was the campaign? It was either Dove or Always, um, the feminine product. Dove. Right? I, I, think, where, I think I know which one you're talking about. Where they talked about, you know, what does throw like a girl mean to you? And when they're, bef I think the age is like before nine or 10, don't quote me on this. I have to mm -hmm. look this up for sure. But before a certain age, girls like don't think there's any limitation to being a girl. Like when they were asked, you know, what would throw like a girl look like? What would run like a girl look like? They're going all out and they're like, yeah, this is how we do it. And then after a certain point, it like turned into this insult. And I really appreciated that campaign because it was trying to get rid of that negative con like stereotype of what does throw like a girl mean and all this stuff. So um, I love that they're not. And I think we need to do more of that in this industry. I know there was a few women in uh, leaderships where they're like, no, I don't want to be known as a woman in engineering. I just want to be known as an engineer. I don't want to be known as a woman in aviation. And that's kind of why I chose Mavens because everybody assumed that it was a female and Mavens is actually an expert or connoisseur, but a lot of women were adapting that term. So I wanted to tie that in with manufacturing, but also bring the history of the Rosies back so yeah. that, you know, we weren't, focusing so much on our gender but focusing on our skill sets and stuff so i that's awesome i love that i do want to bring up aaron great point on all the parts and pieces to make a manufacturing operation run yes there's so much involved and we need everybody on board to make it successful especially if we want to bring it back here to the states and then angela thurman love that michelle so any advice that you have for moms in particular who might be struggling with that work-life balance like do you have any tips for them like you you named a lot of good things that you're doing personally at home but what what sort of tips could you provide them who are struggling because I know I needed some <laughs> I guess <laughs> my my biggest I don't know if this really wouldn't be a tip but you're not alone like yeah if anybody seems like they've got it together is I, I would love to see their house at 8 p.m. Um, you're not alone. You know, we all, I think, struggle with finding that balance. And I think the key is my life is never in balance because there are times that I'm going to give my kids more time and my home more time and work a little bit less. And then there's times that work has to take priority. So I think like trying to keep them stable all the time, you're going to run yourself ragged. It's just about yeah. making sure that you're applying the energy at the right time to the right thing and just keeping keeping both of them important when it matters. So you mentioned too that, you know, your daughters gave you the Mother's Day uh, gift where they were like, you know, my mom works really hard. Are there specific things that you do intentionally to kind of instill that confidence within them or inspire them to try anything? Because um, for me personally, like I was always, I'm a natural introvert and some people have a hard time believing that because I'm always talking and socializing with people and networking, but younger, I'm the youngest of six and my sister that's closest to me is only 14 months older than I am. And she always talked for me. So my dad thought there was something wrong with me for a very long time because I would never talk in front of anybody else except her and my mom. Um, because my sister always talked for me. So when I had my daughter at a young age, I started seeing that she kind of had the same like mm -hmm. shyness about her. And I didn't want her to be the way that I was. So I put her in dance. Now I can't get her to stop talking. But dance really helped her with like, having confidence, not just with her body image, but also like being in social settings and talking and asking questions and taking risk and trying new things like that really helped her get some of that confidence. What are some of the things that you do? Cause I think as women, we're our own worst judge, like we judge ourselves the worst and oh, yeah. it's helpful to have that community and that tribe. So what do you do for your daughters? So one of the things that's always been important to me is when I was younger, 
I never learned because I think of those like kind of traditional gender norms for before I never learned to fix anything I never learned to use a tool or like you know what I mean like we, that just wasn't a thing so one of my big things now with my girls last year my daughter wanted a rock wall for her birthday I was like cool design it we'll go buy the wood you're gonna build it yourself now I wasn't the best at helping her but my husband who's really great at that stuff you know what I mean so she painted her wall they got the handhold they put it together you made my husband climb up at first to make sure it was safe, you know, or like this year she wants a tree house. So she has designed her tree house and, you know, she's building it with her grandfather on like this little like farm that like they have. And so like it's first is I always, I never want her to be shy of a tool or an item or something like that, because that was something I always kind of regretted not yeah. having those skills and i'm learning them now it's never too late to learn right but, you know it would have been nicer growing up with that confidence on like fixing things um and the other thing that i try and this is a kind of a more of like a like a leadership thing is whenever she any either of them have a problem i tell them okay what's the solution so i'm trying to get them to start solving their own problems and like thinking and like there are solutions they think we're working on them they're growing it i think also problem solving is is a skill it's a muscle that you have to work and practice too yeah so just kind of getting them to think like that and then the last thing that is just really important to me is we mentioned body image we we never talk about food in a bad way food is yummy and it fills our hearts and our tummies and our souls and we talk about balance and being healthy we talk about exercise as a way to make us feel good and get out some wiggles and some energy. And just, we always talk about health instead of looks. And I also give them the that. freedom. Yeah, it's it's so important because again, I, I grew up with a different mentality and I'm also changing yeah. the way I think about those things too, so. Um, I love that because like I've always been the I've always been athletic, so I was always in like softball and basketball. So my physique was never like super skinny or any. And I've always loved um, I don't want to say bulky because I think that's the wrong term for it, but stronger looking like a yeah. tone physique. Like I like that. So when I found out about CrossFit. It was like a dream come true to me because it was the athleticism and, you know, the self-motivation and intimidation. You had to have grit. It's it's a mental game as well, too. And it just it was the physique that I was looking for. And I'm seeing a lot more women joining mm -hmm. CrossFit and loving it and killing it. And it's it's just cool to see that switch in mentality where, you know, it's skinny is not like. Yeah. And then this probably sounds wrong, but you know, skinny was always like the standard for beauty. And now we're starting to switch that. And I, I liked seeing that shift. Um, Steve said on here, LOL, Treehouse was literally talking two days about building one for our daughter. Got the perfect tree for it. Just don't know. HOA will approve. <laughs> Good luck. Maybe we can swap Treehouse pictures later. Um, Make sure. You watch uh, Treehouse Masters, that guy. Have you ever seen that guy? On YouTube, yes. Those things are like mansions, though. We're not going that crazy. It's awesome. Like, I want to live in one of those things. But then um, another channel I want you to check out, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Ali G and Nikki Gonzalez from Automation Ladies. Um, they're a sister yeah. podcast to Mavens. But Ali shares uh, a YouTube channel called Little Miss Fix It. Uh, one of her connections has a daughter and he has like taught her how to do like just maintenance stuff all over their house. Um, the videos that she just recently shared, uh, the little girl um, switched out a, a lantern or some a light fixture on the ceiling. So it showed it from like getting the package of the, the light fixture, taking the old one out and then setting up and hooking up a new one. She did it completely by herself. She had her brother help her with turning off the power um, before okay. she, yeah, I think your daughters would love watching that and seeing that because she she replaced a whole entire toilet by herself. <laughs> like she knows how to do everything. And I, I will, think she's only nine or 10. She's so adorable. I will, so I will adorable. we watch videos once in a while like when we want to learn to do something, like when they want to cook something new, we yeah. will get YouTube videos together. So I will, I will start watching some of those. 
YouTube is such a great resource. Oh, so man. anybody that does not have a YouTube channel, look into YouTube shorts as well too. That's something I'm trying to get better at, but they have everything on there to yeah. just how to cook something. Um, we have Amanda, great conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amanda, for joining us. And then we have Daniel. I don't even like changing toilets. <laughs> you should watch it, Daniel. She took an entire toilet out by herself. She even got like cloth to pull it out. Like she's yeah. phenomenal. She's such an amazing person. Well, I want to talk about leadership development and community outreach next. So, you know, I think women have a hard time moving up sometimes in male dominated industries. And that's a topic that I'm looking into and researching. And there's this broken rung theory out there where if women don't make that first promotion, um, it's really hard for them to continue going where they're at and moving up the ladder. And I think uh, the last statistic that I read was like one in four or one in five leaders, like CEO level type leaders um, are women. So small percentage, small representation. And the thing is, is I'm a big advocate for representation because I feel like the more we see one another in places that we would not normally see one another, the more we're going to believe that, yeah, that's a place for us. That's where we can mm -hmm. go. So when you're reaching out to your community, like what are some of the things that you're doing to inspire the next ger generation to join manufacturing and within your company, how are you encouraging your employees to, you know, take on new challenges and possibly move up the ladder? Yeah. So I think one of the cool things here specifically is, I mean, we have two really incredible female engineers here. Maureen is our production manager on the aviation side and that girl kicks ass every day. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, and then we yeah, have knows me knows I dropped the F bomb all the time, so it's totally fine. <laughs> um, and then we've got Amanda, who is our like lead software developer, who I admire every day. I mean, she literally took a sprinter van, gutted it, and made a like mobile home on her own. It's her traveling van, and she did that like all on her own. So like, talk about two really incredible women that I get to work with. I mean, every day that are just pioneers of that industry. So one is we have really great representation here and we have really great partnerships here. But in terms of like the community, one of the things I try to do is I, I go and speak at schools. Um, I love bringing in like circuit boards and some of our instruments and showing them on the iPads. I love talking with schools cool. and showing them that there are women out there and that there are career paths for them, um, mentorships. Um, I love going to networking events and just meeting different women in the industry and just offering. It's that you never know when you need somebody creating that village and that network. I'll be like, hey, here I am. If you ever need me, anything I can ever do to help, please consider me a resource um, and vice versa. I hope that you know, if I ever need somebody, I've got that network of great people, not just women, but people that I can reach out to and we can help each other just get to our goals and achieve things because i think that's the only way to do it like we have to help lift each other up that if that rung is missing if there's those empty parts let's help lift each other up so we can get to the next part of the ladder i love that so much because i feel like so i did a this is a tangent but it relates yeah i did a mud run and it was the funnest thing but most difficult thing I've ever done because it was like 10 miles and that's the longest I've ever done any kind of like running but then you have the obstacles in between mm -hmm. each mile and there was one where it literally was girls just lifting yeah. each other up so you could grab the thing and climb up this this I say stupid because I was so angry at it at the time, but it was a stupid ladder just slippery and covered in mud. A couple fell off the ladder which was yeah. scary but fun because of course there's big like mud pool in the bottom but yeah i love i love that image um i do want to pull up some of these this girl has a career flipping real estate oh i didn't know that angela that's really cool and then steve my daughter loves watching 3d printer and getting to play with a toy when it comes off of it mm -hmm. you should steve does she know how to code uh, the, i want to show you guys my little slump. I've got a little sloth here that 
at my girls. We 3D printed it on one of our machines. I don't know if you can see it, this little guy. So he hangs on my window. So just little fun things. Like talk about getting kids interested, right? Like you don't you don't give them a like an impeller or a screw. Like you you make fun things so that they can design yeah. and make their own parts and pieces. So well, I like the fact that they're playing with it as soon exactly. as it comes off off the printer. So that yeah, that's really cool. And printers, I mean, I remember when they first started coming out with 3D printers, they were super expensive, but you can get a small desktop now for fairly affordable mm -hmm. price. And that I that's like a great way for a kid to get into not just design, but like, you know, co like programming the 3D printer, making something that you can easily print and then mm -hmm. you know materials is another thing with 3d printing so i forgot how cool additive manufacturing was until i went to rapid i used to write about it all the time and then got reintroduced to it i've also got this guy here i got a little dragon on my desk that is super so cool i have all sorts of little fun things for you know, I gotta get a. I have to get a printer now because I want to start making all those things. Um, Vince says I'm surprised the ratio of women CEOs is not higher. It should be. I agree, Vince. But you know, again, it's that whole representation thing. I don't. You know, I've talked to so many individuals in engineering and manufacturing, and I think with today's society, there's a lot of division going on, and I'm always one to ask. The really uncomfortable questions and you know getting to the root problem of why things are the way that they are and i don't know if that's just me being natural curious about things but i know um a lot of my great mentors have been the men in this sector who have been in it for 20 plus years and it was them that like encouraged me to take risk and try things out like maven's manufacturing would not have happened if you know my guy friend who inspired me to like just take the leap and do it didn't encourage me to do it so you mentioned mentorship and i think that's so important a lot of people take it for granted like representation really matters but also having that support system really matters and you know one of my last questions is for you you know if you had an ask for our industry what would your biggest ask be and i know you're gonna talk about the importance of networking. So what would your yeah. biggest ask be for our audience? Become someone's village. I mean, we've all been there and we all are going there, right? Like we're all trying to grow and we've also been in the place before and we know how hard it is. So if you can make anybody's life easier, if you can make an introduction, if you can teach them something, if you can provide them with a tool or a skill or something, or even just a, a year to listen to sometimes, like. You just become a part of somebody's village. I think that's my big ask because, again, if we all help each other, I mean, we're all going to grow together and we're all going to be successful. So try to become somebody's somebody's village and help them out. That's that's my big ask for everybody today. And don't be shy to, like, call people out, too. So Absolutely. I, like, it's, I don't want to, like, sound negative and i'm not trying to sound negative but i've observed a lot of women in male dominated industries and there tends to be like competition among us sometimes because we don't want to lose that spot that we work so hard to get to and my biggest like advice to anyone in the industry as you said find your village find your tribe support one another lift each other up celebrate each other's wins yes don't start getting your head wrapped around those vanity metrics like nowadays everything's digitized so everybody is so worried about their likes and their followers and you know who's <laughs> clicking on what and the number of comments and i just try to encourage people to look outside themselves and help one another because what you put out in the universe definitely comes back to you so i think it's really important for us as women especially to celebrate each other's wins, lift each other's up. Um, I mentioned Automation Ladies before, and I love what those girls are doing. And I've had some people say, well, isn't that your competition? And I'm like, no, like they're doing yeah. great things. And you know, the more people we can get to talk about what women are doing in this sector, the better, because I've met high school girls who don't think this is a place for them because 
within their own community, they're either one or two of 30, out of 30 students, they're one or two of the women and the rest are guys. And they don't feel like this is a place they could be successful in. So just being able to have those conversations with them specifically and encouraging them to keep going is really Mm -hmm. exciting. And that's what we're all here for. We're here to try to fill those gaps that exist in getting more girls in. So I don't know if that's like something you enjoy doing as well, but yeah. yeah. I mean, the fact of the matter is, and we've seen it everywhere, there's a labor shortage, right? There is plenty of room in, in the pie for all of us. We don't, we need to be helping each other. And we need to be encouraging each other because again, like, I think one of the nicest thing, there was a, a saying somewhere like nobody ever got, got higher by pulling somebody down or nobody, ever, it's something like that. Like, you know what I mean? So I, I think, we're we're all in it together, guys. So we, we gotta help Absolutely. each other out. We got a few more comments. We have Inger. Happy Friday, Michelle and Megan. Hi, Inger. Thanks for joining us. Um, I need to come to Canada and visit you because I love you so much. You're an amazing, positive influence in my life. And no worries about being late. You can always catch the recordings on YouTube. And then we have Elizabeth. Success doesn't have to be a zero sum game. There's value in supporting each other's purpose. Absolutely, 100%. My competitive side, though, is always going to be we need to beat out the men, but that's just my competitive (laughs) side. Maybe one day we'll get there. Um, Hello to everyone watching. And then Angela said it's not pie. There's an infinite supply of success to go around. That's true. Um, true. Anger agrees. Oh, thanks, Anger. So, yeah, um, before I let you go, Michelle, if anyone has questions for you or more about LaVille and what you guys are doing, What is the best way they can contact you and where should they go to find out more information? Yeah, so if anybody wants to contact me, um, you can find me on LinkedIn, Michelle Leon. Um, I'm always happy to chat with anybody. And like I said, networking, let's let's grow our villages together, reach out to me. Um, If anybody wants to learn more about LaVille, you can find us on social media, LaVille Technology or LaVille Aviation. Um, Also, we have our our website, LaVille.com. Um, you'll also find me, I'm usually running around trade shows, aviation shows. I'll be at Air Venture up in Wisconsin in July, of uh, ACTE for manufacturing. Um, so are you going to come and visit me? I saw that light bulb. <laughs> well, I'm in Wisconsin. Yeah, come out to Oshkosh. It's in Oshkosh? It's in Oshkosh. It I'm is going the biggest air show. It is also the busiest tower in the world that week, which is always really cool. Um, so come, I'd love to show you and uh, around. We can geek out over all of the aviation stuff. So I went to that show a long time ago and it is massive, but it's such a fun show. And okay. Yeah. I have to tell the story before I let you go. So my, yeah. my, my, the, the year that I went, they were featuring, um, I think it was a, the helicopters that they used in Nam or one of the fighter planes. It was Nam related though. And my, my dad is a Vietnam vet and he doesn't really talk about it. And that was a horrible, horrible time. Like mm-hmm. there was just mm-hmm. so much conflict here in the United States, especially. So there was two gentlemen ahead of me in line and they were talking and um, talk about two polar opposites. One was like long hair, bandana, totally stereotypical Harley looking guy, uh, the motorcycle riders, Harley. Um, and then the other one was like button up and leather, leather jacket, really business type looking stereotypical guy. They were both Vietnam vets. So they had that commonality and they were talking about like their time. And I was just listening to them and I was asking them questions and they're like, Oh, so do you know anyone that served? And I'm like, yeah, actually, my dad was a Vietnam vet. And I'm like, he doesn't really talk about it, though, because it's just, you know, it's hard for him to talk about it. And the guy that was um, uh, with the bandana and everything, he goes, will you tell your father, welcome home, brother? And I just started bawling because at that time when they came home, there wasn't really a big welcoming for them. And it was just amazing to see that camaraderie there at that show. But it is an amazing show. But I just, I will always hold that show close to my heart because of that 
moment right there. I just thought it was good. So I will reach out to you after this and we'll make a plan because that that is a fun show. And um, I'll probably bring my kids with me, though, too, because they're obsessed with airplanes and stuff. So, yeah, but I'll be doing a, a, a temporary tattoos in the booth, too. So make sure they stop by for their airplane tattoo. <laughs> I will definitely do that. I want to bring up uh, Michael's comment. No room for competition in my mind. I want everyone to be successful. That's the only way to be. I mean, we can still do friendly competition because I feel like that's what drives us to um, improve. come up with better, yeah, improve yeah. progress, better innovation, better design. But we can we can be nice and civil about it. We don't have to be jerks when we're competing with one another. I because yeah. that that's no fun. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for joining us. Before I let everyone go, I do want you to know that I will be at Automate not next week, but the week after in Detroit, Michigan. We're su I'm super excited because it's the first time I've ever been to that show. And I'm also co-hosting a ladies night on Tuesday night with the automation ladies. That's Nikki Gonzalez, Allie G, Courtney Fernandez, also Emily Wilkins from Marketing Metal and Wyatt from Industry or Workforce 4.0. Um, she's amazing. She's helping recruit the next generation into engineering and manufacturing. And then also Sammy Birch from uh, Mission Design Technologies, uh, which is in Michigan. So I hope you guys can join us at Automate. If not, make sure you're co leaving comments below and letting me know how I can get a hold of you. If you're a woman in manufacturing and engineering and you want to share your story, please reach out to me because I'm looking for more guests to fill up the rest of this year's schedule. So Michelle, Thank you again for joining me. I really appreciate the time. Do you have any final words that you would like to say before I let you go for the weekend? Ah, oh, man, no. Reach out to me, too. If anybody ever wants to chat, I'm here. If anybody needs an excuse during December time to come to Florida, uh, I'm also happy to be your excuse as well. So come by LaVille. We love giving tours, showing people around. So don't be a stranger. I'll definitely be one of those people to use that excuse. Well, yeah. thanks, everybody. I hope you have a great weekend. Please stay tuned for a word from my sponsor, Fresh Horizons Group. They are the ones behind making all of my merch with the amazing brand. So be sure to check them out. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye. 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 This episode of Mavens has been sponsored by Fresh Horizons Group. Fresh Horizons Group is a family-run company that was founded on the premise of helping organizations and businesses better tell their story through high-quality branded apparel and promotional items. Freshen up your brand by contacting Fresh Horizons today at freshhorizonsgroup.com.